What's up, guys and gals? Coach Dale and Coach B Fun here. We're going to be talking a little bit about uh, this week's GPAC ride, the Hammerfest. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got uh, we've got a little bit of information on how to bridge, how to bridge across to a move, and then there's a little there's a little one two that happens there. We'll show it here. So we fast forward a little bit. We are kind of further down. It wasn't really exciting early on. I kind of went early on going downhill and stayed off for a little while. My goal for the workout initially was to, to work the matchbook similar to what coach B fund did last week. Um, so I did a couple heart attacks, stayed off, kind of recovered, hit another hard minute recovered and it ended up just staying off for a little while. Uh, this is at the point where one of our teammates, Scott Rollins catches us and goes over the top of my move. So, which is a, a great tactic. Like the old one, two, the old one, two punches are, are key, you know, get, get other teams chasing, take advantage of your teammate. Who's been off the front and don't let that go to waste. Right. Counter attack. So here we go. Wait for it. I'm waiting. Kabam. Oh, wow. Was that fast forward? No, it was not Man. two times, two times speed. Bam. So good initial gap. Uh, wind, the wind today. This was essentially tailwind right now. So we're heading east. Uh, this was essentially tailwind, which meant you know the the ride home, like the home stretch, was going to be more headwind, and the Fisherville stretch was going to be crosswind. And it was pretty windy too. So like what, like ten to yeah, ten to fifteen? 10 to fifteen, yeah. So you can see no one's chasing. So Dale's I been at the up. front. I he saw, sat I was up. Soft and now we got Nick uh, Hagedorn, who's come through with. So now there's two two of us on the back of that, which is again from a tactical standpoint, it's a great thing to do when you have a teammate off the front. Um, you know, there's oftentimes people talk about like interrupting the chase, yeah. And it's not something where you go and like force yourself in and then sit up, but essentially what you do if you place yourself second wheel, as soon as the the person who's chasing tries to flick someone through you just stay on their wheel and that in and of itself helps uh helps grow a gap because then it would force um i think that's luke uh right there that would then force luke to come around another person there's just that yeah. few seconds of interruption you can kind of see it happening here um few seconds of interruption allows your teammate to uh to grow the gap even more so so my goal with when i came back was to get everyone that i thought could follow my moves in front of me and so Luke being one of them, uh, I kind of like surfed back enough to get a few people, uh, you know, in front so that I could go and do another matchbook attack here. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, I was only going to go if I could go solo. Uh, so I didn't want to drag people up to Scott. So I was kind of waiting, uh, you know, there's a turn up here and, and it gets slow. So I knew Scott was going to have to slow down at the stop sign. Yep. Uh, so I didn't really want to do another attack leading into a stop sign. So I was just letting kind of Luke roll, but I was kind of just waiting, waiting for anybody that I thought could handle or would possibly jump on my move to, to uh, get in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. Tactically when, where you attack from is almost more important than how hard you attack. Cause if you can surprise people, you can avoid having to do that really massive surge um, it's only when you've got people that you're really concerned about behind you that you then need to put in like a really massive effort to try to gap them as well. But the whole thing about, you know, getting a gap and, and, and staying away is speed differential. So you want, when you go by either the person you're most worried about, or when you go by the front of the, the group, you want the d- differential in your speed versus theirs to be as significant as possible. So it's not like you want to attack and get a really high amount of speed you want to come past the front with a high amount of speed um so you can do that by you know waiting till the group's starting to slow up and just carrying momentum but the faster you're going relative to the people in the front the more they're going to look and say okay who's going to cover that (laughs) as opposed to having to put in a big effort to try to get get onto your wheel yeah so we got this little hill coming here which is usually where something goes and they're newberry tries and there there was some (laughs) Lee oh, shuts the door. <laughs> Lee blocked him in, but, uh, you know, Peter kind of saw what was going on and then went himself and Newberry jumps on it. So I just kind of stayed on 
on Newberry, and if we had a gap, then the idea was to go over top of Newberry and uh, and Peter. So something Newberry's doing there, uh, and something everyone should do: take those those quick peeks back. So he's taking a peek to see what's happening behind him, to see who's coming, to see whether the group's strung out. Uh, you need to know what's going on behind you uh, in order to make the best decision, right? So he's been looking back. He's starting to kind of sit up uh, and, and waiting to see what happens. And you can see Peter sat up and Dale essentially sits up also. Yeah, and that forces it Peter to close I, it. I, again, I was, I was looking for opportunities to get as many people in front of me that I thought could follow a move. And so when Newberry accelerated really hard, um, I wanted Peter to do as much work on that as possible so that I could come and do an acceleration. There you go. Perfect. So as soon as, as soon as y'all started, that's a, you know, a slight little incline there. As soon as the speed from Newberry started slowing down and Peter didn't go around perfect time to attack. And there we go. Scott's so when, back in view. Yeah. So Scott's back in view, but I did notice that Hart Robinson was coming across. Uh Oh, he was coming. So I just totally sat up. Do we call that a heart attack? It was a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he was coming across, but when I sat up, he sat up and he, he had some, uh, so that was Nick, Side right? Comment. That just uh, <laughs> that looked like Nick that just Heart, that just went. Hart's Hart's uh, level of comedy is it is is uh, very very dry, <laughs> but I knew what he was saying. But he's going to come around here in a second. He's going to chase. I, I sat up and kind of let everybody again go around, uh-huh. uh, try to get as many people in front uh, as possible that could that could follow a move. And you just kind of have to like go with the dynamics of the ride too. So Hart finally decides to go around. So I'm I'm gonna jump on him because he was kind of one of the folks I was concerned about following another attack. And that was that looks like Luke. Okay, so now we've got what Hart up the road. You got Peter up the road. You got Newberry, and we still have Rollins up the road and you can see Rollins is, is starting to get pulled Scott, back there. Uh, Scott just came off the Belgian waffle ride. So his legs, are, <laughs> legs are a yeah. little tired. So I was surprised he stayed out as long as he did. Exactly. So now this is Peter's what probably third, third move, you know, third acceleration that he's had. And that's something I'm always kind of thinking about. And you, you may have been doing the same as like how active is a person being, how many matches are they burning? And it's like, I always like to store that in the old brain Rolodex yep. um, to start, to start kind of figuring out how tired or not someone may end up being later on in a ride or, or how willing they might be to chase. I had, I had already had an idea that I was going to go on the back stretch back here. Mm -hmm. Um, because it gets, it gets hard once we take this right hand, we have some cars coming here. Uh, but it gets hard when we take this right hand turn. And so I wanted people to have to work up this hill and then go after that hard section uh, we a little slow up here, but, um, yeah, so you'll see Luke come around here, do a little dance and, and, uh, use it, use the slow up to his advantage, but it happens all the time in races, mm -hmm. you know, something happens, you know, and causes a, a slow up in the group and somebody with momentum, you know, and then Nick takes perfect advantage of that spot mm -hmm. and, and gets a really good gap really quickly. Yeah, it looked like Luke was maybe going to go, and then he was like, oh, wait, no, that makes no sense tactically for, for Luke how, to go. how big of a gap Nick got really quick. Yeah, so now we got Waldrip on the front, so our teammate Steven's on the front riding a decent little tempo. Here, mentally, I'm always thinking, okay, how, how fast is that guy going away? Who is it? How strong is he? Um, and, you know, we're going to talk about the decision to bridge across to a to a move. I'm always in my mind saying – like I want to be able to jump across a gap in less than 60 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see, I, I had a feeling that Newberry was going to chase it. Yeah. Uh, so I, again, I was kind of staying back and I, I already decided that I was going to try to go once we got kind of going on these rollers. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he went and he went hard, uh, to chase after Nick and he got there pretty quickly. Yeah, he did. Um, and at one point, Towing, towing Pete Sully, yeah. also a 901. So now, like, tactically, 901's got two up the road, and we got one. Advantage goes to them. Yeah. Not something we're happy with. So I was I was basically waiting, again, to, to see who was going to get close. And on this stretch here, I noticed 
you know, Luke being in front was perfect. And then having Elijah was right behind me. So I kind of started here, uh, kind of it's the base of the, that hill. Mm -hmm. And this was like, uh, this was like 10 seconds over a thousand Watts, uh, out of the saddle to the top of this little crest here. And then the whole bridge effort probably took me, it was right under a minute, like 58, 59 seconds. Uh, I think it, the average was like 500 Watts. Um, but we're on a really rolling terrain here. Mm -hmm. So the average speed of this bridge was like 34 miles an hour. So, uh, they weren't waiting up for me. So the, the choice I had was to kind of press where I thought I could get the most aerodynamic benefit since we were going so fast. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get as, as low and as aero as possible, keep pressure on the pedals. Um, and then, it, you know, as soon as I made contact with the group, I basically didn't pull, didn't take any turns. Uh, I pulled through kind of lightly a couple of times. Um, but Newberry still riding really strong. So him, him being so strong in the group allowed me to recover kind of as much as I want. So you kind of let, let the gap form and kind of make, uh, make Pete do a little bit more work or sorry, Nick, let Nick do a little bit more work <clears throat> and jumped in in front of him. Cause I thought the gap was getting too big. Now, were y'all talking during this point in time or was it? Not really. Uh, I was kind of just assessing, uh, the other guys in the group. I knew Newberry was riding really strong. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was, every time he pulled through, it was, it was really hard. So it was kind of noticeable that every, every other time he started to pull through the, the gap from his surge would get a little bit bigger. You can kind of see, well, it's kind of a downhill, but. Um, I followed him through on this one, but as he starts to pull through more and more, the gap got a little bit bigger, a little bit harder to get back on. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see kind of up here how it, how it ended up. But I was trying to get myself, uh, placed between them and not, I was trying to get myself placed between them and not like right behind Newberry. Yeah. Cause I didn't want them behind me and have the ability to go over the top. So after this pull, uh, or once we kind of turn on to Raleigh, mm -hmm. I kind of let it reshuffle, which is a perfect time to reshuffle too. Uh, you know, anytime you're in a turn or if you're someone who's, you know, maybe you want to make it look like you're doing work. Uh, so the, so the break, you know, kind of feels like you're doing something going into a stop coming out of a stop. Both of those are going to be, great times to, uh, to make your way to the front and give the appearance that you're trying to help out. Um, so that, you know, from a tactic standpoint, how you ride a breakaway, you know, is, is a massive part in how you're going to finish, uh, a ride or a race. So you've already talked about number one, Newberry, super strong and Newberry has a tendency to kind of test his breakaway companions by putting, you know, by coming through hard. So he rolls through pretty hard, and uh, so he's someone you do not want to be behind, and ideally you don't really want him coming over the top of you either. Yeah. So tactically, number one, even if he wasn't on your team, you wouldn't want to be behind him. And number two, you don't want to have both your teammates right in a row because then the other folks, uh, your other breakaway companions, can take advantage and surprise both of you. It so kind you, of At this point, it kind of occurred to me that I, I used that turn to take a little baby pull and nobody was coming around. So mm -hmm. I was like, people are probably getting tired. Um, and then when Newberry came around, um, he, he came through pretty, pretty hard. Um, so we're kind of like, I'm kind of like sitting back, sick, sitting on the back of the group at this point. Um, and you'll see here, I, I let Newberry kind of take this next, uh, pull through here. So even right there, Pete was kind of looking around. This is a great place to attack from because we're, you know, we're behind them. They can't really oh, yeah. see what's going on. Um, and so Newberry starts to surge through and I just drop. And so you kind of see the gap, the cap, the gap's kind of there between Pete and Nick and Nick jumps on Newberry. And then the, the gap to Pete is getting bigger. So I just kind of decided to go over the top. This was another like, it really wasn't a huge, but it was a thousand watt, you know, peaks 
to to come to Nick. And by the time I got to Nick, I noticed Newberry was up the road. So I just went over the top, did a little leapfrog. And then kind of the whole effort probably took, I think it was 20 seconds to, to from from the acceleration around Pete to Newberry's back wheel. No, and you played that you played that perfect. So you were looking for signs of a weakness, which is the first thing you got to do. Like you want to you want to sometimes people may be gaming you and trying to get you to come around, and other times it may be that, you know, they they are fatigued and and this is the headwind section again now too. So anytime a gap is opened, it's it's a lot of work that you got to do uh in, if you're the one in the wind. So you did a huge acceleration around uh, Sully so as not to drag him back up to Nick, right? And then when you notice that Newberry had a gap on Nick, that tells you right away, okay, Nick's if, – if he's not closing that down and he has all the incentive in the world to get out of that headwind as quick as he can and to get on, on Scott's wheel, that tells you that the legs, the legs probably weren't there for him. And so you, you took advantage. You didn't hesitate at all. You used all your momentum, put in another big surge, again, to have that speed differential we talked about at the beginning to be as high as possible, um, you, you were able to capitalize uh, essentially off his draft. A little Ricky Bobby slingshot. We, I mean, we, it, it, was, it was kind of the perfect scenario because we were, we were on that bridge incline mm-hmm. when Newberry was accelerating. And then so I started the acceleration on the incline, and then when I crested the top, I was coming up behind Nick, so I already had a head of steam. I mean, it was a it was a thirty mile an hour bridge, like twenty second. But because I had so much momentum coming in behind uh, Nick, I could just you know leapfrog it yeah. to to Newberry. The rest of this is pretty. That's why it's going so fast. It's pretty boring. It's just Newberry and I rotating. Uh, Newberry did a ton of work uh, on the back half here, um, and. <laughs> When we got to the, we didn't have footage of it. When we got to the final climb, uh, we both, I believe, we didn't talk about it until the last bit. But we we were both, uh, we thought we were setting up the other one for the final climb. And so coming into the final climb, we were like, "You take it. No, you take it. Now you go." So and, that's where it sounds like you're yeah. being kind, but really you're just not the wanting to sprint. I did not want it. I did not want to have to put in another big effort <laughs> up, up Monterey Hill. Yeah. All right, so kind of thinking about, uh, and you and I were chatting about the power numbers uh, before we before we started watching this. Hardest one minute of the ride was five oh two. And where was it though? It was on the bridge. On the bridge attempt. On the bridge. So that again, that bridge started with ten seconds over a thousand. Yep. And then averaged five oh two. So I think most of the time, because it was a lot of downhill, so there was it was me trying to get super small Mm -hmm. uh so there was uh i was probably averaging four something while i was uh actually pushing the bridge and then the peak five minute was also not in the actual breakaway it came prior to the bridge attempt and ended with the bridge correct yeah the peak five minute i believe was like 330 something but that was like that was with that first, um, that, uh, that jump, yeah. the, the fake jump, yeah. um, when I sat up and then all the way around when Nick attacked uh-huh. and then basically to the end up of the, the hill attempt. end of the brain. So. so that just goes to, to tell you all that, um, you know, making like being in a breakaway in general is less challenging than, Number one, trying to get into a move and definitely less challenging than having to bridge across to a move and deal with those hard accelerations. Um, but you have to be willing to do those accelerations. The, the reason you made the breakaway is because, you know, your objective was to do the hard, short efforts, right? So in doing so, you were testing folks, uh, you were testing their legs. And also, you know, the more times someone attacks and comes back, the, you know, after a while, everyone's like, well, I'm tired of chasing this guy. Yeah. I was, uh, I went into the workout fully prepared to get dropped at some point if I was just going to attack and, yeah. and come back. Um, so, you know, you have to, you have to go, you have to be prepared to, to fail, mm-hmm. uh, in some instances, if you really want to get the most out of the workout. Um, in this case, the, the ride dynamics just ended up in a breakaway, which mm-hmm. is good practice as well. 
Um, but you know, the overall, um, effort on that, the whole loop, uh, ended up normalizing like three thirty something. So it was, you know, it was a lot of on and off and there were several big spikes, uh, on the whole, the effort was really, really hard. Um, but I think the average power on it was really only like two seventy seven something mm-hmm. like that. So yeah. Big variance, but I did it to myself. Exactly. But yeah, it goes to show you, you got to be willing to be aggressive if you want to be e aggressive. Ooh, be aggressive. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you want to, if you want to make a, make a breakaway, you've got to be willing, either you got to follow the person that you know is going to make the break. Like if there's one person that's always in it, then, I mean, and if you've been watching these videos, Newberry has made quite a few of these breakaways, but either you got to follow the right person or you got to be someone that's, that's putting yourself out there. Like if you're just going to, you know, sit in and hope to be there at the end, um, get out of your comfort zone, try attacking more. Like it's okay to get dropped on a group ride, uh, build fitness, build the matchbook, try new stuff out, learn, change it up the next time. Uh, and I guess without getting too long with this video, that's all I had to say about that. (laughs) Life is like a box of chocolates. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. If you uh, if you want to see more of these videos, make sure you drop a comment, thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. Adios. Peace.